it's Julia and welcome back to my channel. Today I have an easy sewing tutorial for you. I've been making eyeglass holders. Um, I've, this whole project was inspired by the Crafty Gemini tutorial on how she made her sunglass holders and I'm going to link that down below. Um, giving her the credit for it. I, I revamped it, did the closure a little bit differently and made also adapted the size bigger so that an iPhone would also fit inside or one of your larger um, phones. So I hope you enjoy this project. Like I said it's quite quite quick and easy and uh, let's get started. Arteza recently sent me some quilter rulers to try out and also a rotary cutter. So I'm, I am going to be using one of the rulers for this project. I'll be using the nine and a half square. This came in a pack of four. Nine and a half square, there's a four and a half, a six inch, and a twelve and a half inch also. But we're going to be using the nine and a half. One of the things I really love about this ruler is the neon colors, or it's kind of a neon green yellow. It shows up great for either the whites or the darks. You can see the grid really well. Also, it comes with the non-slip non adhesive rings that just stick on the back side of the ruler and that really helps prevent the slippage. So a couple things I really have been enjoying um, about these rulers. I've also been using the rotary cutter and this is the 60 millimeter. Now being left-handed, it's the whole cutting thing is is one of the, our challenges. I'm sure if there's any left-handed crafters out there you know what I'm talking about. Um, I And this one works really well for both it's very comfortable in my left hand. That's a big thing when a lot, a lot of the packages will say that it's can be used for either the left or right-handed but it, that doesn't always happen. I've had a couple cutters that I've I've really haven't been able to use in my left hand even though it said that it was you know either or. Um, one of the things that I really have to be careful of is where the retractable little button is because a lot of times on the little they're they're right here well on a left-handed person that your knuckle bumps it when you're cutting and then the whole the thing retracts and it's it scares me and it you know it just doesn't it, it's just not what you want to happen and so for any of you left handers out there I do recommend this the Arteza um, rotary cutter it works really well you will need two prints for your eye eyeglass holder I happen to find this um, at the thrift store they're napkins so I am going to be using this for my outer fabric and you will also need a print for the for the inside. Cut the same dimension. Um, and and the I'm going to start with my nine and a half inch square. I have both my pieces cut now. My outer piece and my and my inside or liner piece. I'm just going to double this up here so I make one cut. I do have to cut this down. I do need the nine and a half going this way but I only need eight inches going this way. So I want to cut an inch and a half off of this. It's going to line it up and do that cut quick. For the stabilizer on our little eyeglass holder I use the double-sided fusible foam. For any of you who've, who've used this, you'll know what I'm talking about in that it's very easy to work with, easy to sew through, it's it's very stable but it's not super thick or it, it's, just, it's just easy to work with. Also it's perfect to protect those things like your, your glasses or your, your, your phone. It, it gives enough of a cushion but doesn't add a lot of bulk. So it's just, it's wonderful. For this piece, you want it to measure a, an inch shorter on both sides. So this one I have cut at seven inches by the eight and a half inches. I have my lining piece laying the pretty side down. So the right side is down and then I'm just going to lay this on top and just get it to where I want. So you're going to want a half an inch going all the way around or or just approximately. 
Once it's in place, I'm just going to carefully flip this around. You don't want to iron it from the um, fusible side because you're going to—it'll stick to your iron, and you'll have a mess. Now it's all attached, and again, I'm just going to leave it so that the right side is up, and place my right side fabric. So both the right sides are are together. I will be sewing all the way around this now, leaving a gap open. And I do like to leave the opening on the short side. And I usually mark this so I don't forget. So I'm just gonna mark with my little uh, Mark Be Gone pencil here, the marks. I'm gonna stick a few pins in. When I sew this, I'm going to start at one of the marks, do a back stitch just to lock my stitch, and then go all the way around, pivoting at the corners and stopping at this mark, and again doing a back stitch. You do not want to catch any of the stabilizer in your seam, so what I want to do is just run my, my needle right up against this, going all the way around it. When I do this type of stitch, because I'm going to be turning it, I do like to use a shorter stitch length. I have mine set at a two on my sewing machine. I'm on to trimming the corners before I turn this right sides out. As I turn this, if any of the little foam lifts, that's fine. It, it, it'll press down once I get this turned. I'm using my little pokey tool just to get in here and turn the and poke the corners out. And now it's on to ironing everything flat and getting that fusible foam to adhere to both sides. I'm folding in this opening and this will be caught when I do the side seams. I do like to add some quilted lines on my little cases. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it just keeps the fabric all together and I just love the finished look of it. And I like to draw that first line on with my Mark, Mark Be Gone. I'm just going to line this up and just from corner to corner, doesn't have to be perfect, but just to draw that first line in. I'll be taking this to my sewing machine now and top stitching on that line and then also do all lines on both sides about a spacing about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half apart and I don't measure the other lines. I mean I, I mark the one line and then I just kind of eyeball it. It gets close enough. One of the things about the stitch length on, on this particular stitch is I'm going to make it a little bit longer. I'm going to be setting my sewing machine at a three. So I'll be back. I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and get the quilting lines in place. I have my quilting lines in and I also top stitched a quarter of an inch away from the top of my little case. To get rid of this blue marking line, I find the easiest way is to spray it with water and it takes quite a bit of, of water to get rid of it. The case will be folded now and top stitched on the long side and the short side, but I do like to add a little detail to the top by flipping this down and then adding a button. I'm also going to add a little piece of lace right here, similar to the other one as you can see. This was another thrift store find um, that I, uh, boys, I've had it a couple years now. It was a table runner that was damaged, it had some stains on it. And I've been cutting these little motifs out. Another thing to keep an eye on if you happen to find something like that, it does if, if, if you're cutting it to pieces, it doesn't matter if it's stained. This is going to be folded down. 
and I'm going to sew this right on the top. I'm going to be using my free motion stitching on this and then putting the button into place. And I found a pack of these and these are wooden buttons. Now wooden buttons are not washable but for this type of a thing it works they work just great and, and I love the look of them. So I'm going to be going through and deciding which one I want. I think I I think I'm going to go with this one. I'm going to go to the sewing machine now and do my free motion stitching and then sticking my button on. And I do use my sewing machine to sew my buttons on. Now I have my embroider foot on. Sometimes it's called a darner foot. I have my feed dogs dropped and I have my stitch length to zero. And I'm going to be do the mo be doing the motion on this. When I'm putting on just a little motif or just a little design like this, I find it's just easier to do it by free motion. And now on to sewing on the button. I do have my button foot on. I'm just lining it up. The trickiest part of doing this is to make sure that your stitch width is right so that the needle goes in the holes and doesn't break your needle. And so I usually test it by just going down and I'm hand walking my machine right now. And it looks like this one is going to be fine. So now I'm just going to be pressing down on my, my foot control and this machine will automatically stop when the button is sewn on and I usually go through the whole process twice. Now notice how it went up and down like three times in the one hole, in the one hole. It, it'll lock the stitch and then I'm on to, I'm going to do the whole thing over again. step is to close up the side and the bottom. I like to get everything gathered or together here and in place and then using the wonder clips for this and just to hold it into place. Now this we still have a little bit of an opening here from where, where we did our turning and I want to get that in place too and clip. I'm going back to my sewing machine now and I'll be having my stitch length again at about, a, at about a three but I will be going back and forth several times at this stress point. I like to use a, a little bit longer stitch length when I'm going through several layers. It just seems to work a little bit better for me on my sewing machine but I do want to make sure to get this sewn several times again because that is going to be the part that's going to have the most stress on this whole this whole project. So I'll be back. I'm going to go to my sewing machine and finish up with this. And here's a look at the finished project. I hope you have a chance to give this a try. I do want to mention that this is a great craft show idea if any of you out there do craft shows or like church bazaars it seems to be one of those items that is easy to do it goes they go together really quickly and they sell really quite well so I hope you enjoyed this and I hope this gives you some ideas hope you have a chance to create today bye for now